Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this episode, episode 46, I'm going to talk about how adrenaline and acetylcholine affect heart rate. So let's get right into it. In the last episode, episode 45, we looked at this slide where I showed that in the SA node, we have a pacemaker potential that results in a spontaneous signal so that we have the heart beating in response to these action potentials that are automatically generated in the SA node. Now, if you haven't looked at episode 45, I would recommend for you to pause this right now and go and watch episode 45 so that you can get a full understanding of what we're going to be talking about. Let's go to the next slide. Now, I'm sure you've all been in situations where, let's say you're doing something and someone jumps up behind you and scares you. What happens? Your heart starts beating faster, and the reason it starts beating faster is because adrenaline is released from the adrenal gland that's located above the kidneys. When that adrenaline is released, that causes the conductance in the pacemaker cells to change. And as you can see here, we have an increased conductance for sodium and calcium ions. That is going to cause those to rush into the cell much faster. So it's going to look a little different than what we looked at before because the membrane potential is going to increase significantly faster so that we're going to get a faster action potential. So it might look something like this. As you can see, the signal happens much faster and forgive my um, sloppy drawing here. So we have signals being produced much faster and the heart rate increases. Now, if you remember from the last one that I showed, I was able to show two action potentials on this. But because sodium and calcium ions are rushing in much faster, the signals are going to be generated much faster because it's going to reach the threshold much faster and we get an increased heart rate. So that's adrenaline. Now there's an opposite effect where instead of adrenaline being released, we have acetylcholine being released. And I didn't plan for the acetylcholine to come in as a flame, but it did for some reason. And what happens when acetylcholine is released? As you can see up here, the conductance for potassium is going to increase significantly. Now you should know that potassium wants to leave the cell. So this is going to increase hyperpolarization, and it's going to slow down depolarization. So what's going to happen is, instead of this rapid depolarization, we're going to get a significantly slower depolarization so that it takes much longer to reach the threshold. When it reaches the threshold, the usual process happens. Voltage-gated calcium channels open, and calcium rushes into the cell then we have our depolarization. Then this process continues. But as you can see here, depolarization is much slower than over here. Here, depolarization is sped up because sodium and calcium are rushing into the cell much faster in response to adrenaline. And here, it's going to be much slower because more potassium is leaving the cell, causing depolarization to slow down, and we get a slower heart rate. Faster heart rate in response to adrenaline, slower heart rate in response to acetylcholine. That's pretty much it for this video. As usual, you can visit the website at interactive-biology.com for more biology videos and all of the other resources we're putting together over there. This is Leslie Samuel, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.